Hello, sir. Good to see you. Yeah, you, you need uh, to We're gonna bring that. Filming right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, here with Dr. Mario Abdinur. Mario, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. All right, so Mario and I are at the AAE meeting inside uh, track in the fall session, correct, which is in the beautiful city of Austin. Of course, the weather hasn't been that nice, Mario, right? Well, what can you do? It's always when you're on, in, on, uh -huh. on a meeting, you, you like better weather, but that's okay. I we know. came here to learn, not, not to uh, To learn and to eat barbecue, of course. Oh, it was right. wonderful, yeah. It's, so Mario and I just, I don't know how you're holding up right now, but we came back just uh, from a bunch of sessions of uh, classes in the morning, and then we went for lunch to uh, right across the street to a, a great barbecue place. Because anybody who comes down to, to Texas, you gotta try barbecue, Austin, any other places in Texas. And we went to this uh, great place, uh, Iron Works, right? Iron Works. And had a crazy place, and I think both of us kind of champion finishing. <laughs> it was fantastic. You should try it that was. when you come back. Definitely. But what we wanted to talk to you about quickly is about the two sessions that were going on this morning on the two topics. Correct. One of the topics was was dynamic access, right? Correct. It's and a then, dynamic uh, na navigation and targeted endodontic uh, microsurgery. Exactly. That was one of the topics that was wonderful. And then the other one was on um, um, good 3D printed guides for microsurgical access and so on. Correct. So these two topics seem to be a pretty uh, interesting and new development in endodontics. You want to just kind of very briefly kind of share with those people who are not familiar with the concept, what is this all about and what did what each do? For example, on the dynamic access, what are we trying to do here? Well, on the uh, dynamic navigation, they presented uh, several uh, ways to access a pulp without making a gigantic axis, basically um, targeting the pulp, of course, with the help of CVCTs and without using uh, a stent uh, at all. The other one was the uh, target endo microsurgery, which did use a stent. Right, right. So that was the 3D printed guides. Exactly. So in the, in the targeted procedure, you, you're using a device that's connected to, with a software that you obtain from your CBCT. Correct. And then from that, you kind of uh, develop a 3D guide and you look at a monitor while you are kind of accessing for non-surgical surgical and you align the, um, you know, the, 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 the handpiece with the monitor so that you can go and make a very minimally invasive preparation, find exactly. the access, and then from there on, you, you go ahead and do your thing. So it's helpful for very, very calcified cases and in situations in which you want to limit your access preparation, and you're trying to combine the information, the three-dimensional information you get from the CBCT and with the software algorithms that allows you to kind of coordinate and adjust the head of the handpiece, and Correct. you can go straight down and get it, That's right? exactly right. And in the other one, which is the 3D printed guides, it's still pretty advanced, but I guess it's not, doesn't require all the yeah. software that is live connected to your handpiece. All you're doing is you're taking that information and then the lab is creating a stent the same way they do in implants, right? Correct. You create a Correct. little stent that you put for where you're gonna put your drill guide and your implant drill. But they, you do that now with either a trefine bar or with an access bar for either surgery or non-surgical applications. That's right? exactly right. And both methods basically are trying to um, minimize the amount of bone and the amount of tooth structure that is removed. That's why it's called either targeted or, or uh, basically a dynamic navigation because right. you will reach that area with minimum uh, So they're both kind of minimally invasive. Removal. Exactly. So what exactly. do you think, Mario, in your opinion from what we saw, what do you think are some of the advantages and the disadvantages of each system and where do you see they becoming implemented at a kind of a global level, everybody versus a very niche Group. What is, what is your opinion well, about Well, uh, I believe that depends on the uh, skill of the endodontist. If the endodontist can reach most of those areas, then uh, he might not be using that so much. But on specific cases where we know very well that in order to find either the apex or the pulp might be very, very difficult, then that's a fantastic method just to basically um, reach and treat more cases than before. Yeah. No, certainly. I mean, I think right now some of the limitations could be uh, obviously uh, in terms of the dynamic navigation one, the cost of the software, and the processes that goes into it uh, in order to, to do that. So that that's the barrier, of, obviously. Um, but maybe once it becomes a little bit more kind of a universal, the price may drop down. Correct. Although in endodontics, I think uh, unlike <laughs> anything else, <Yeah. laughs> the price tends to maintain itself. That's exactly um, right. But uh, 
but that, that could be one possibility because I can totally see this being a very helpful kind of a tool for some of the novice uh, users and, and also for even the experts who are using doing calcified cases to be able to navigate without removing too much uh, dentin and almost virtually completely eliminate the p possibility of a perforation, of an access perforation or anything like that to be able to get down to where the canal is. But the limitation remains the cost and potential learning curve of getting this to work. I think a more practical one might end up being this uh, 3D printed guides. Right. Which then, the advantage again is that it probably is a little bit lower cost because all you do require is a software program. Uh, but you do require to make an impression and then use that impression and work in conjunction with a lab perhaps to make you a guide. But it seems to me the only technical kind of expense there would be that of the um, 3D rendered design that Correct. you're gonna basically have to then print out and uh, the laboratory obviously cost of that. So these, I think these two areas are pretty um, interesting. Do you, see, do you think they're gonna get much uh, traction coming up? I, I believe so because like uh, anything in technology, if there are uses where you can make your life a little easier, uh, that will help. Or if you're trying to avoid basically uh, a vital structure like basically a greater palatine uh, artery or some other structure, then that will give you uh, a great sense of security avoiding those uh, structures. Yeah, I can totally see for situations in which you want to do either a transbuccal approach to a parallel root where you have the Florida sinus nearby and you don't want to perforate it, exactly. you can design all of those you know, exact path and tunnel exactly. in advance so that you don't have to potentially end up with a perforation. Anyway, so it's been a very dynamic. Have you been enjoying the meeting so far? Oh, it's fantastic and yeah. it's, uh, it's lovely. It's, this is my first uh, uh, inside track meeting. I've been to a lot of uh, AAE meetings, so it's super, super nice and enjoyable. Yeah, definitely. So make sure next year, if you haven't attended, come and attend. There's a variety of people here in the Donis and General Dennis, and everybody's learning, and it's a great atmosphere. Come to the inside track for the uh, next year, and tomorrow we still have a couple more sessions. A couple uh, more sessions on Saturday, too. Yeah. Today's Thursday, so exactly. we have a couple more days. Terrific. All right. Thanks Fantastic. for joining me, Mario. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, guys.